Hi guys, Tech here, and we're going to do build guides finally. I have given up. I was really hoping to have QBs out before I announced the build guides, but we're just running out of time and I didn't think I was going to be able to do this otherwise. So I wanted to take a little bit of time and do some kind of in-depth build guides with you. So we'll start out with playtesting a little bit about the build guides. We'll run into POBs with the build guides. Then we will also be covering the giveaway as well as a look at the Atlas passive recommendation. So it's going to be kind of a long video. I do want to kind of preface that uh, before we get into everything. If you would be so kind is like, comment and subscribe. It does really help the channel out and it does help me grow. As far as the giveaway is concerned, we're going to do a live stream this Saturday, which is going to be the Saturday of League launch. So live stream this Saturday. Then we at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time or GMT minus six, we are going to be giving away an elite Ember Keep supporter pack. So if you would like to participate, if you cannot make the live stream, if you are either subscribed or followed, uh, subscribed on YouTube or follower on Twitch, I will automatically get you entered. If you aren't either of those and you don't want to do it, that's completely fine. All you gotta do is show up for the live stream and we will be doing the giveaway on air. Um, I do already have the code. If you would like to join the Discord channel, I will put a link to that down below. That will be the easiest way as far as that way you can reserve your name exactly the way that it is on either YouTube or Twitch, whatever you prefer to watch on, because uh, I'm going to live stream on both simultaneously. And that way we can get you entered in uh, to the giveaway. But if you match your name up exactly on Discord, we don't have to worry about there being any shenanigans or anyone trying to do anything dishonorable and I get it right to you. Uh, if you don't want to join Discord, that's perfectly fine. We can figure something out, whether it's an email or just some way of, of getting in touch with one another. Or, you know, maybe you uh, make a character name specifically for me to trade with. Uh, and you can just put it in chat or something. We'll figure something out. Uh, but it is a code I'll need to get to you. So yeah, so that's that part. As far as the build guide part, you've kind of been seeing the video in the background. This is Absolution. So what today's video is going to be about. It is a very interesting minion build. It definitely has its pluses and its minuses. The biggest plus, I would say, is the survivability recovery from making mistakes is very high with this build while it's still being a very high damaging build. Upon digging deeper into Explosive Arrow, I do think Explosive Arrow is bit, way better than I was originally giving it credit for. However, I still have concerns about the recovery options specifically. I want to be able to make mistakes with the build because we're not going to know all the fights. That's something that I personally am very concerned about. And so this has a little bit more. As far as what I've seen, ability to make mistakes than what I've been able to test with other things and still do really good damage without buffs. So with buffs, it's going to just be significantly better. And it's a minion skill, so it's pretty easy to get started with. And it's pretty easy to gear up from there. And you can kind of see like the clear speed is OK. It's not the greatest in the world. It's OK. But the boss damage is really good. The other thing is, if you want better clear speed, you can easily sub out like lightning pin for summon phantasms, and then you would get an additional 20 minions to go around and help kill stuff. So you can also go that route, too, if you're wanting a little bit better clear speed. You can absolutely do that. And this build does have quite a bit of flexibility as far as if you wanted to run it 
hybrid or a CI or a low life, you could absolutely run it any of those three ways with the vine shield and it just kind of works. I'm kind of leaning more towards hybrid just because of ease of access with league starting. But it's also nice to know if you want to go into the really large multiplier damage increases that you get from low life, you can do that. And the extra auras that you can run then as well, um, that those are basically just possibilities. And you can see that the damage is pretty darn good uh, for most things, and it clears fairly well. It's not going to clear as well as like EA Ballistas or as well as like Bladefall Blade Blast, but it is still going to clear pretty well. And so that's this part. Turn this off for a second and I'm going to get POB loaded. A couple of things to cover. You'll see that there is a default and then several leveling trees down here. Goes 1 through 20 all the way through 81 to 100. And so during each of these leveling trees, you can kind of click and see. And something to note, this will also be updated accurately based on levels. I don't know where, where you're getting these at. As far as the item section, it does have a low, a medium, and a high investment. So you can kind of path through and play around with everything. As far as the trees are concerned, once you go over to high investment, you will see, oh, there's also cluster jewels in here, which you can play around with as well on like the high investment side of things. And so you can, you know, path through this guy and this gives you like the, the big dog uh, cluster jewels that you'd probably be wanting to look into for these guys. If you want to go that route, you don't have to, but it is certainly an option here. Uh, you will notice that this cluster jewel has 12 passives, which is atypical, and it has 30% increased effect, which is also atypical. This is actually just kind of the min maxi way to do minions, if you were not aware. The other ones that you can pretty comfortably pull out of is these guys right here are not the biggest nodes in the world. And then like also you could pull out of sacrifice and you could also pull out of like a little bit of block if you needed to to like fill up more on the cluster jewels. You can absolutely do those things and it isn't going to be a huge detriment to you. As far as the skills, you're going to notice that there's two different groupings here. There's a six link slash plus three helm. And then there's the opposite. Normal helm or six link with a plus three helm. So what that's talking about is that if you have a plus three helmet, this should change from your helmet to your body armor. And this should change from your body armor to your helmet. If you have a plus three, if you don't have a plus three, leave absolution in your chest. But if you do get a plus three or better helmet. So if you get just a basic one. I wouldn't worry about it. You know, this is like a super, super high end crafted helmet. But I do also have just, you know, more basic gear here as well. The reason that the this is a unique and not a blue is because likely it will be cheaper than the blues that will be doing the same thing that we need, which is the recovery on block will likely be more expensive than Aegis Aurora, which is why this is set as a unique. This would probably be your most expensive item for early on League starting. Darkness and Throne is normally very cheap, even like day two or three, just because they're very common. But Aegis Aurora will be a little bit expensive. Now, if you can find a shield with either life recovery on block or energy shield recovery on block, you can absolutely use that instead of Aegis Aurora. Those are either going to be a Crusader or a Shaper modified shield of at least I level 75 is what you would be looking for there. Now, if you get one of those, absolutely go for it. Aegis Aurora is kind of like our end game shield, though. So it, even if it's like 5, 10 chaos more, it's probably worth it um, because that plus five maximum to cold res is actually very, very good. Very, very good. So that kind of gives us a brief re rundown on this part. As far as the calcs, basically nothing is set here. 
Um, as far as configuration or calc is concerned, I basically left it all blank. That way I'm not like artificially inflating any numbers, anything like that. You can absolutely come in here and change all this around um, and increase the calcs and do the math if you would like to. But I wanted to have like bare bones, mid tier, and then like high end kind of what you would be looking at. The numbers here are, are not the the biggest numbers, but is very deceptive as far as like damage totals are concerned versus what it actually in practice does. Absolution is just a little bit weird mechanically because it's trying, it doesn't know how to calculate it because it's technically a single attack. And then it's also technically three minions casting that same attack. So it gets very complex as far as calculating it on path of buildings side. This is the start of leveling tree. So this is kind of what you want to pick up when you want to pick it up. And then there is the upgrading section as well as some damage stuff, as well as like some high higher end crafting and some uniques to look for. Those two together are very, very good. Very, very good. They aren't needed. They aren't mandatory, but they are very, very good. So keep that kind of in mind. Then let's pause this for a second and then I will go over the Atlas passive tree. All right. So for the actual Patla pa Atlas passive tree that I'm planning, and I know this is like full maxed out points, I did want to kind of explain a couple of the things. These early notes right here are all very, very solid as they guarantee things in map. So this one guarantees an essence. This one guarantees a strong box. This one gives us additional currency and rare jewelry, which we will have rares obviously in every single map. So that's very good. This one gives us a shrine. This one gives us a Harby. And this one just gives us more maps and higher tiers of maps. So this is like our little progression part right here. Then the rest of this guy outside of these four nodes, just because I really like Harvest. If you don't really like Harvest, absolutely pull out of these four and do something else, it, especially for early. You may want to get out of them. Queen's Hunger. We want to kill Katarina a bunch to get a really well rolled Queen's Hunger that has really good mods on it. And then we want to take those really good mods and then hopefully double corrupt it. Right. So because this is going to be a very bossing focused character, I want to make sure I got as much of the bossing nodes as humanly possible. I also wanted to really focus on being able to run syndicate encounters very, very quickly and hitting masterminds very, very quickly, which is kind of what this tree is for. Now, there are some things that you may like look at and be like, oh, well, that's interesting. As far as like these, these are not bad nodes. I don't know if you want to get them early. I think these are more like late game nodes than they are early game nodes. So you may possibly eventually want to pull out of like these map nodes here or like this harvest stuff here and grab these. But I don't think you want to do that until very, very late in on your mapping cycle. So this is kind of like a starting point. And then you're going to want to make some adjustments probably going forward as you progress from early game to mid game to late game. This stuff is just really good. This stuff is really good. These nodes, I'm not sure how much the etched in acid and baptized by fire, how good those are going to be. If they aren't very good, you can save six points on each one of these and easily grab this guy in these. Um, so that's another option as well. This one, it could be really, really worth it. It could not be really, really worth it. I'm just not sure on those ones. I also did want to come in here and grab the currency nodes on both of these. And then, of course, the moist toys is insane. Captivated interest is really good. Pay for play is really good. So this is really Al can go progress through hit betrayal. Once we hit betrayal, we're going to 
really push up the end game system and start trying to farm Katarina, start trying to farm our two new end game bosses, start working on Maven and Shaper and Elder and basically all of those. So because we're kind of focusing on everything boss related with this build, I wanted to build a tree that one would help us have a fairly smooth start to league because you don't want it to be where you can't even get maps that are a tier above. How on earth are you going to progress further? So that was one thought process. Another thought process is I didn't want to not have things to interact with while doing betrayal because betrayal does get tedious very quickly. And once you get a handful of Queen's Hunkers and you're comfortable with where you're at, you can absolutely get out of this betrayal stuff, right? But you're probably going to want it for early in. And I don't know if this June, I don't think the June is worth it. Like these three points, it could be, but I don't think it is. A handful of Queen's Hunkers and you're comfortable with where you're at, you can absolutely get out of this betrayal stuff. Right, but you're probably going to want it for early in. And I don't know if this June, I don't think the June is worth it. Like these three points, it could be, but I don't think it is. Um, but you could absolutely like pull out of all of this and all of this and just path. However, whatever you want to focus in, you can absolutely do that. This is absolutely malleable. This is really where I'm looking at, at League starting at. Kind of for my idea is once I get a couple of Queen's Hungers and I get a chest I'm pretty satisfied with. I'm definitely going to probably drop out of bribery once I get most of my crafts unlocked. And I'm going to get Enduring Influence. I'm not worried about Enduring Influence early because we're not going to really have Sextants early in the game. It's going to take a little while to get Sextants from what it's looking like. And so this will give us a good pathway of going forward and having a fairly smooth mapping experience. It won't be the smoothest mapping experience, but also have a very smooth transition from early to mid game to end game bossing. And then, of course, once we hit the in game bossing part, we can start removing points and moving stuff around because we won't need as much of the map stuff. So you won't need like these three points at in-game you probably won't need basically any of these betrayal nodes or any of these betrayal nodes or you may still want these betrayal nodes but maybe not these or these or these so if you're gonna pull out of all that well it makes sense to just path differently and save a whole bunch of points because you can just connect here right and get these two nodes even though they're not the greatest but you could absolutely so you could just path through either harvest or path through the, the map stuff here, or path through uh, Harbinger here, Abyss here, Delve here, Abyss here, Expedition, Delve, you know, kind of just pick your poison as far as what you want to focus on. You can pick up any of these in the middle over here, or you can even pick up something over here and then shoot over to this side and connect through that way and then just spec out of this stuff. Either way is perfectly fine, but this is probably a, a pretty balanced tree as far as being able to elk and go as far as to really focus on killing bosses, but also be able to transition once you no longer need that base level in all of your maps because you have a very good map pool and you're able to easily sustain your bosses then you can transition into more fun things. So like you could go into, you know, rogue metamorphs over here. Or you could go into the crazy exile stuff where you have 20 tormented exiles and maps, which is sounds like all kinds of fun. These shrine notes might also be really good up here. This unique map is really good if you couple it with the uh, synthesis stuff, because then you could get like level. What would it be like 87, 88 synthesis bases? So that would be really strong. So that's something to consider as well if you're really looking for like high-end crafting you know the harvest stuff is pretty good if you just want baseline crafting 
So there's a lot of ways that you can kind of go from this tree. And it, it really is just up to your personal preference. This is kind of the route I'm planning on going with this build. So I kind of wanted to mention them in tandem together. That way you would have kind of an all encompassing look of what I am looking at doing. I hope this is helpful. I will also have a full article below attached as well. And I will have this also linked to the article so it'll go back and forth between each other. That way, if there's not an answer on this, there may very well be an answer on that page. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching the build guide. Quick recap of the giveaway details, because I want to kind of hit that in, because this is also the big giveaway announcement. So it's Saturday, which will be February the 5th, February the 5th at 3 p.m. CST or GMT minus six. For those of you that don't live in North America and may not be familiar with CST, we will be doing the giveaway. I will be using a randomizer. Um, essentially, everyone that is a subscriber or follower, uh, subscriber on YouTube, follower on Twitch, so nothing paid, nothing paid, just free stuff. If you're either of those two, I'll get you entered. You don't have to worry about showing up. If you are not one of those two, show up to the live stream. Um, I will have a part where I'll have you comment on the video just so I can get everybody's names once we are ready to start the giveaway. And I will do a live drawing. Now, if it is someone that is a subscriber or follower that is not there, I do want to give them a window to be able to claim it. So we'll do like a 24 hour deal. As far as from the end of the live stream, so Sunday, if the person that wins is not there Saturday, Sunday will rerun it. But on the Sunday rerun, then you'll want to be present to win because I don't want to keep it being like a ever flowing cycle. Hopefully, if someone wins, we get it taken care of within that first 24 hour window and everything is great and we don't have to do the Sunday stream. If we do need to do the Sunday stream, though, we can absolutely do that. But I do want to have kind of all the details ironed out. I will also have all the details in the description of this video. I do want to thank you so much for supporting me and for letting me do this great hobby that I enjoy so, so much. I am very, very grateful and I will catch you guys on the next one. Have a great day, Exiles.